Stratton from Aswood Turns. I picked up this piece of wood at a club meeting in Oregon. It, uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, but it does have some burl figure through here. So, and then on the inside, uh, it has some rot and some uh, bugs and a lot of checks going through the outside. So I'm not sure what's going to be coming of this, but I think that the, my best bet is to make this the outside of the bowl to try and maximize the burl figure that may be may wind up in it, and make this the inside of the bowl where hopefully the rot will go away. The uh, portion over here, I think I'll just cut off to begin with because there's no particular figure there so that I can focus the bowl in this area here. So let's have at it and make a bowl out of this unknown burl wood. I did cut off some of the wood that did not seem to have burl eyes. Now I'm mounting the wood between centers with the side for the bull's foot towards the tailstock. On the headstock side, I'm targeting to center based on splitting the distance between the burl wood. On the tailstock side, I'm targeting the center of the burl mass. This leaves me with the blank slanted in the center, but should maximize the potential for burl eyes in the final bowl. Right now, the wood is very dark, very dry, and very ugly. I'm hoping I can salvage a bowl out of it. Roughing at first is a very slow go. I cannot turn up the speed because the blank is so unbalanced. The slant in the top of the bowl blank is also a challenge to turn off at a slow speed. I'm using my largest bowl gouge. As the wood is exposed, I see a lot of spalting. The wood smells of mold or fungi. There's massive tear out in the spalted area. At this time, I'm despairing that I'll be able to get a smooth finish on the final bowl. In summary, there are three major stages for a bowl. First, mount for roughing and exterior. Here, the usual mount is a faceplate or centers. I used centers because I wanted the option to adjust the axis of the bowl. The second mount usually uses a tenon into a chuck while hollowing the interior. It's still a good idea to have a tailstock support during heavy wood removal. The third and last mount is to finish the foot. Best ways to mount are either a vacuum chuck or coal jaws. Other ways include a jam chuck or tailstock holding the bowl against the faceplate. Bowl turning is what attracted me to this facet of woodworking. As the wood rounds out, I'm turning up the speed and having an easier time cutting away the wood. I debated for a while whether to leave some of the low areas in the side of the bowl, but eventually decided to tool them out. They would have left a sharp edge around holes in the bowl sides. Not what I want. I've cut a 2 inch tenon. I almost hate to use this nice burl wood for a tenon. It is too small to serve as a foot. I'm leaving another larger, almost like tenon, higher up that will eventually serve as the bull's foot. The wood is looking more promising. The burl eyes are showing up and there is some nice spalted figure. There's still excessive deep tear out that keeps me worried. This dry wood keeps my tool very hot and hot wood chips threaten to burn my fingers as they fly off the turning.
With the exterior nearing completion, I'm switching to a large bowl scraper, hoping it will resolve the tear out problem. It actually works. Then I power sanded from 80 grit through 400 grit. It's time to reverse the bowl to start hollowing out the center. I'll keep the tailstock in place for as long as possible to reduce the risk of the wood popping out of the chuck when I take heavy cuts. Hollowing goes amazingly quickly. Maybe this is due to the wood being softer from the spalting. There is very deep tear out on the inside area also. Usually I do push cuts from the rim down to the center. This time I'm having a lot of success with a pull cut with the gouge nearly closed. It hogs out a lot of this soft wood quickly. Now I'll slow down and clean up with push cuts. Finally, I'm cutting out the stub with the live center. After just a little more gouge work, I'm switching to the heavy bowl scraper. I still have a lot of tear out on the upper sides of the bowl. I'll work at it with the heavy scraper at an angle and a little bit with a half inch round nose scraper. Then sand the interior. Now for the final stage. I'm reversing and remounting the bowl to finish the foot. My best options are a vacuum chuck or coal jaws. Here, I'm using my shop made coal jaws. I've switched to a smaller, freshly sharpened spindle gouge. Since I cannot turn the speed up a lot, a sharp tool is critical. I've marked a line where the base starts to thicken. I will not tool very much outside of the circle. I do have a lot of excess wood at the base. There's a lot of burl wood there that I'd like to save, but Hopefully the burl continues far enough into the center to still provide a lot of visual interest. Just before finishing with walnut oil, I'm signing the bottom with biography. I'm using a small ball tip. I could get sharper with a skew tip, but for now I'm satisfied with the ball tip. Two pencil lines help me size and guide the lettering. And voila! That dark, smelly, gnarly, rotten, wormy, and simply ugly hunk of wood has transformed into a beautiful bowl with lots of interesting character from sapwood, heartwood, burl, spalting, cracks, bark inclusions, and wormholes. If you were the Oregon woodturner who harvested this wood back when it was an ugly duckling, I thank you for my beautiful swan, even though I still do not know what wood this is. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Then keep on turning. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.